Hello students, welcome to another video of operating system. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about deadline scheduling. In the previous lecture, we have discussed the real-time scheduling and real-time operating system and its characteristics. So here we are looking what is deadline scheduling and how its work. In deadline scheduling, certain jobs are scheduled to be completed within a specific time or deadlines. We know that in the operating system, there is a there is so many jobs are there and that will be scheduled by scheduled by scheduler uh, to the CPU. So, in deadline scheduling, each jobs can have or each jobs should complete with a specific time or deadline each jobs can have a uh, specific time or deadline so that is the speciality of deadline scheduling in the case of deadline scheduling each jobs in the job queue or each process in the process queue that can have a specific time for completing that job so that is deadline so these jobs may have very high value if delivered on time and may be worthless if delivered later than the deadline. So the jobs which will complete and uh, which will execute the delivered on time uh, that means uh, that will be delivered on time that jobs very uh, have high value otherwise that is worthless. If uh, that job is delivered later, later than the de uh, deadline, that job is worthless. Uh, so, if you if that job is uh, delivered on time, that uh, job is uh, that or that job have uh, have high value. So that is uh, deadline scheduling. The user is often willing to pay premium to have the system ensure on time cons uh, consumption. So here says that uh, the users is often willing to pay premium for uh, this deadline scheduling and deadline scheduling is complex for many reasons. If you have to compare the deadline scheduling with other scheduling algorithms like first come first serve, shortest job first, round robin scheduling. So deadline scheduling is uh, most uh, important or most uh, good good one of other compared with other scheduling algorithms this and and good also that is complex for many reasons that reasons are listed here so first reason is the user must supply the resource requirements of the job in advance in advance users need to uh, and uh, supply the resource requirements how much uh, resources are required for that job in advance so that is specified that is must be specified so such information is rarely available so that is why uh, that is why we can say that this uh, deadline scheduling is complex so the second point is the system must run the deadline job without severely degrading service to other users if uh, the uh, system must run the deadline job without severely degrading service to other users other users if, uh, if we know that uh, there is a uh, in a system there is maybe have multiple users so the deadline job without uh, severely degrading services to other users jobs so that is uh, saying here the uh, third point is the system must plan its resource requirements through to uh, the deadline because new jobs may arrive and place unpredictable demand on the system. The system must plan its resource requirements through to the deadline. So the if uh, the deadline uh, through the deadline that will be specified uh, or that will be plan uh, the resource requirements how much resources are required. So by using the deadline that will be planned or that will be specify the resource requirements because new jobs may arrive and place unpredictable demand on the system. So if uh, a uh, uh, 
new job is coming uh, or new job arrival that will be making a, a, a demand or uh, place an unpredictable demand on the systems so that is why deadline scheduling is complex so that will be making a uh, demand on the systems so if many deadline jobs are to be active at once scheduling could become so complex so another reason for uh, the complex complexity of deadline scheduling is uh, if many deadline jobs are to be active at once scheduling could become so complex if we, we know that there is a, a so many jobs out there that jobs uh, if that jobs are deadline deadline jobs that will uh, that will make oh, uh, the uh, system or oh, uh, the, the scheduling is complex so that is that point then the last point is the intensive resources management required by deadline scheduling may generate substantial overhead so here the comp uh, here we says that there is a so many deadline deadline jobs are uh, arrive that will need an to uh, needed the resource management are required the resource managements are required for the deadline scheduling for uh, so for uh, generate substantial overhead so uh, so substantial overhead is generated if we are not uh, manage the resources uh, very well otherwise so that is why uh, we need to manage the resources very well so uh, otherwise that will make a substantial overhead so that is why we can say that deadline scheduling is complex so these are the reason how we can say the deadline scheduling is complex so next uh, the deadline scheduler imposes deadlines on all IO operations in order to prevent wanted requesters deadline scheduler imposes uh, deadlines on our if uh, we know that uh, in the scheduling in between scheduling there may there is a possibility of occurring IO operations or IO requesters so uh, that will be uh, so the deadline scheduler prevent wanted requesters like IO operations uh, that will be prevent uh, the wanted requesters in the case of deadline scheduler so two deadline read and right queues are maintained so in the case of deadline scheduler there is an uh, important queues are the two queues uh, are the one is read queue and other is write queue that is the basically sorted by the deadline so uh, for every new request the scheduler select which queue will serve for it so we can say that there is a two uh, there is there are two queues are the uh, one is read queue and another is write queue so if a new request is uh, coming then the scheduler select one of the queue for service so that may be read queue or that may be write queue so read queue is given high priority than write queues so read queue have the high priority because of uh, the read operation uh, we can post, uh, process usually get blocked generally we can say that the if a read operation is uh, ongoing and write operation is ongoing so we can uh, possible or we can uh, block it the uh, read operation easily write operation is complex than read operation so that is why we can say that read queue are given high priority okay then now the deadline scheduler checks if the first request in the deadline queue has expired then a batch of requests from the shorted queue is served deadline scheduler first uh, checks uh, and uh, assign the deadline job for the deadline queue then after that uh, deadline job like that job is completed or expired the a batch of requests from the sorted queue is served by the deadline schedulers there is a batch of requests are uh, arrived for execution so that will be served next after the first request is expired so that is uh, the working of 
deadline scheduler. So the scheduler serves both a batch of requests following the chosen request in the sorted queue. How uh, the, the deadline scheduler is serves the uh, from uh, the batch of requests. So that is uh, by uh, using choosing the request in the sorted queue. The sort there is there is a sorted queue. From that sorted queue, that is choosing the uh, job for scheduling purpose. So by default, the expiration time of read request is of 500 millisecond and write request of 5 seconds. So uh, if we do not assign a expiration time, the default value of read request or uh, the default expiration time of read request is 500 milliseconds and write request is 5 seconds. So uh, that is the expiration time related to the deadline scheduler. So let us understand it with a scenario. So uh, we uh, next looking another example or uh, consider a scenario. Suppose there are three processes P1, P2 and P3. So suppose there is a there are three processes are the P1, P2, P3 with respective deadlines that uh, each process can have a respective deadlines are the so deadlines we know that deadline means uh, the expiration time for that process so so the deadline scheduler states that if P1 makes a request at time t so first if a P1 process request request to execute a particular time t it cannot make a request again at some time interval so that do not request again uh, at some time interval after that time interval only that process can possible to request again so that is the speciality of deadline scheduling each process or each job can have a deadline and that after that time interval or uh, each process can uh, have uh, the, the there is a time interval so only after that time interval that process can only possible to request again to the scheduler so that is the point important point related to deadline scheduling so here is a picture which showing uh, the deadline scheduler and uh, really it's uh, cues related to deadline scheduling so here we can possible to see four cues are the first one is sorted queue read FIFO queue write FIFO queue here write and read sorted queues are discussed in the previous uh, portion so from the sorted queue or read queue write queue uh, the dispatch uh, that will be uh, that jobs is moving to dispatch queue and uh, that will be scheduled to the uh, scheduler deadline scheduler so here you can possible to see the deadline scheduler deadline scheduler is uh, choosing the uh, jobs from these various queues based on the uh, deadline so that is the working of deadline scheduler so next we are discussing what is tunable parameter and what are the tunable parameters so first what is tunable parameter tunable parameter means that is a kernel parameter that can be changed during runtime. A parameter that can be changed during runtime that is called tunable parameter. Sys, SysCTL is a command we, uh, we are using to uh, find out the static and tunable kernel parameter. So we can possible to find out static and tunable parameter uh, kernel tunable kernel parameters by using sysctl command. So uh, if you have to giving uh, the C, uh, or type the sysctl command in the command prompt 
you can possible to see these type of uh, kernel parameters or uh, tunable parameters. So what are this? That is discussed here. So what first one is FIFO underscore batch of integer. This tunable determines the number of read or write requests to issue in a single batch order in term of increasing sector number. So FIFO underscore batch of integer uh, tunable which is determined how much read or write request is issued into a single batch. So here you can possible to see an integer here we are assign a value that is an integer value that specify how many read or how much write request to a single batch that is a FIFO underscore batch tunable parameter. The next one is read underscore x pair of integer tunable that will be determined the time in milliseconds in which a read request should be serviced. So this tunable is specified how much time a read request serviced. So that is why here read underscore expire the name itself that have the meaning how much time a read request should be serviced. So that is uh, specified here how much milliseconds in milliseconds that is specified here uh, if you have giving a uh, read request in IO scheduler is assigned a deadline. So we say that uh, in the case of a read request or IO scheduler uh, the read request is assigned a deadline that means uh, deadline means uh, current time plus read expire value that is uh, that in milliseconds for example uh, we can possible to give the in value of integer like this read underscore expire current time plus uh, for example 100 milliseconds so from the current time onwards to the 100 milliseconds that a read request is uh, assigned or uh, work okay after that millisecond that will be uh, that is the deadline for that uh, read request so after that that will be uh, that will be out from that scheduler so these are these are the two uh, tunable parameters next one is write underscore expert of integer that is similar to read underscore expire integer this tunable determines time in millisecond with which a write request should be serviced so this is uh, specify how much time or how much uh, time for write request is serviced so it is the same as read expire but for write operation so this uh, only difference is one is for read and one is for write then another tunable parameter is writes underscore starboard of integer. This tunable control the number of read batches to be processed before processing a single write batch. This is for specifying specifying the number of read batches to process, uh, pro, uh, process before processing a single write batch. For uh, before processing a single write batch how many read batches are to be uh, are need to be processed so that is specified by using write underscore starboard integer so higher the value of write starboard the higher the preferences of read so if you are giving higher value of force write starboard the higher the preferences for read that will be preferences for read so that is write underscore starboard of integer then the last one is friend underscore merges of bold integer so bold integer means boolean integer friend underscore merges this uh, tunable which is to merge or merge the uh, request in front of the queue we know that there are there are so many requests are the are placed in the queue if the new request are arrived if you want to place that new request in the friend of the queue so that that is done by using friend underscore merges of bold integer tunable 
so that is friend underscore merges then similar similarly there are uh, back back merge is also used for merging the request onto the back of the queue so that is opposite of of uh, the friend merge how the friend merge is working that uh, that uh, opposite works are done by the back merge so due to the way files are typically laid out back merge is common than the friend merge back merge is commonly uh, worked uh, if you have uh, typically using the file okay the io scheduler merges the smaller request into already laid out operations in friend merge tunable is set to zero in the case of friend merge the tunable parameters value is set to zero it disable the functionality of the friend merge so if you have to set the tunable value into the zero that will disable the functionality of friend merge so friend merge uh, is used to uh, make a request or place the request in the friend of the queue so that is the things related to deadline scheduling okay thank you